Hello, I am Jin Song from Samsung Research. Today, we are pleased to announce its great journey into healthcare research. Recently, Android has been trying to add more software features such as Health Connect to achieve a leap forward within health sector. Today, we will share some of the many ways to enhance Android community for healthcare research. For those interested in the structure of our discussion, our presentation will be separated in five parts. If you have any questions, please ask at the end of our presentation and demo. In past few years, we have seen a huge overall trend in accessibility of data to consumers. For us, to take advantage of this new accessibility of data, our plan is to reform the healthcare research structure by considering three main social economic changes and technological development. First, increased use of digital data complementing evidence-based research highlights the importance of data from users as well as healthcare professionals. Second, healthcare's focus is shifting from provider to consumer. Third, COVID-19 pandemic accelerated digital health technology adoption. With that increase in new wearable devices, there is a huge opportunity to connect individuals with diverse medical background and conditions. So this gives us a huge opportunity to learn biobank development cases studies with wearables or user generated lifestyle data in combination with their medical data. However, there are common challenges in healthcare research. Research stakeholders must create their own digital service for data collection method for various data acquisition and management and analysis of collected data. All these difficulties are exacerbated when trying to use new types of data for research. So let's talk about how Samsung's innovation is solving these issues. One of the big efforts of Samsung was to understand and highlight gaps requirement within the current system. The current structure for context-sensitive research studies requires front-end apps, back-end services for each case, which highlight the clear need for a common research component framework. This model also takes a long time to launch and market research studies, and it leads to increased cost and time for building resources. In addition, there is a higher distribution cost. The typical high healthcare structure research flow starts with participants connected to health data strategy through applications or medical devices. After collection, the organization needs to store and analyze the data. They also need to create a backend system on this collection process. The problem with the following structure is all the major costs involving parts of research take huge time. The time can be set, spent on research or analysis itself. So, arriving at our solution to all this, we will take a holistic approach. The collection, storage, and analytics will be covered on the same open source solution, Samsung Health Tech. We extracted the common core features of research studies and modulized them in an app SDK, portal, 
and backend system. They are created with developers and researchers in mind, bridging cost and development gaps. As I mentioned earlier, the whole system will be open source, and we want you all to join us. Samsung Health Tech is an open source project that provides end-to-end -end solution for various use cases from medical researches and clinical services using wearable devices. The App SDK will come to he help here by providing many modularized features already available. This passes the data collection process. After collection, the organization needs some data management tool, which will be the second major part of our project. The collection and analysis research portal will be available for researchers. Any organization can directly use the data within their research. The App SDK is created to provide stakeholders with the building blocks to create apps to rapidly collect data from participants. There are three components of the SDK. First is onboarding plus consent. It provides introduction of study and gathering participant consent. The second component of the App SDK is research-specific survey engine. It consists of customizable UI components for surveys and tasks. The third part is data visualization. It lets developers add visualization to the data and providing feedback to the user. Moving on to the portal and backend system, it also can be divided into four components. The first component is research management service. It supports mobile registration and participant consent in research. It also provides configurable surveys and tasks for participating users. The second component is administrative services. It supports the creation and management of the project. It server, it, the services also can be used to assign specific rules and access to the project. The third project, the third component is data streaming service. It helps in collecting users' health and survey data from mobile and wearable devices. And the last but not the least component is research service, which provides a customizable dashboard for interactive data visualization. It can also be tried, utilized for analysis, reporting, and sharing of data. In addition, I would like to introduce several real applications and partners who are using our open source. Several startups and hospitals are actively using this project to conduct their own business and research and developers of Samsung Research are helping them to apply it. Sorted is a startup company which develops a smart insole-based sports and digital healthcare solutions. All-round Doctors is also a startup company where they develop digital therapy to improve compliance with chemotherapy based on known face-to-face -face monitoring. Yonsei University Health System is one of the biggest Korean hospitals. They are considering to develop cancer patient care service using our open source. I will explain in more detail about the POC with Sorted. Sorted is developing data biomarkers for early detection of dementia and Parkinson disease by collecting and analyzing smart insole and wearable watch data using our open source. We expect to improve their data biomark development speed by providing an end-to-end -end research environment 
where watch data and smart insole data can be collected and analyzed at the same time. In the future, smart insole SDK may be contribute, contributed to our open source so that other researchers can use insole data for their own research. Our open source is available at GitHub right now. You can download the source code from here and try to use, uh, develop your own research application. It is an alpha version yet, so there are many things to be developed and stabilized. We welcome all the developers who want to contribute to the open source. Now, live coding demo will follow. Thanks, Jinu. Hello, everyone. This is Ji Don working for this project. Nice to meet you all. Today, let me show you how our Samsung hashtag can be used in a regular research project. Let me start from a simple scenario for easier understanding. Next, some basic pictures of our portal will be provided. And then I create a mobile app with our app SDK. Last, we may see how to manage and analyze survey results. Before our demo, I will let you know that this code lab is available on this GitHub page. Please note that red colored sentence at the top. We are on the way of developing and improving so it's still alpha version. So I'd like to ask your understanding. Our step might not be stable. Then here we go. For this demo, let me set up a normal situation. Recently, people with superpowers begin to appear all over the world. This phenomenon is called syndrome X. Dr. McCoy hypothesized this syndrome is related to certain vital signs and symptoms, such as heart rate, blood pressure, or headache. To prove this, he wanted to set up a study, so-called MG study, stands for Mutant Gene Study. To carry out the MG study, he will gather participants and collect their vital signs and symptoms. Vital signs will be collected through a galaxy watch, and symptoms will be collected through a survey. To conduct a study, a mobile app, backend, and a portal are required. Fortunately, our Samsung handset can satisfy these requirements. First, McCoy needs to build backend and a portal for data collection and research management. This process was conducted in, in advance due to our time constraints for this demo. So now we have our portal. Let's go to the portal. If McCoy logins, he can see a list of projects he can access. Going to the MG study, he can check the list of participants and some vital graph, science graph. Again, these are all collected through a mobile app. Aforementioned, our stack is able to provide role-based access control to ensure data privacy. In the study settings section, he can identify which members are participating in this study. As we can see, some people are already invited, but no one joined yet. Anyway, now let's invite my boss, Jinu. By clicking the invite member, we can assign Jinu 
to this study. Hey, Jinu, Dr. Meko invited you. Please check your email for the invite. Oh, thank you. Now, Jinu can conduct the research for this study and can also invite other peoples. Now, we, we just saw how to invite members to a study. Next, let's create a mobile app to enroll participants and obtain their vital signs. We can use our app SDK for this. And this time, let's customize our sample application. Many features are available with only a few customizations. For example, one of the features is an onboarding task. The onboarding task is introducing a study, checking for eligibility, and getting data permissions. So let's see how we create an onboarding task for the NG study. For the introduction, the only thing we have to do is customize some values on the intro model. Let's change it to the title to MG study. And we also change the description. Okay, we've just set up the intro step. Next one is eligibility step. In this study, vital signs will be collected through the Galaxy Watch. So we are going to ask if they have one. Let's add a question for that. We can easily add a question using our question model. This time, we'll add a, add a choice question. Question is, do you have any Galaxy Watch? And choice might be yes or no. The answer should be yes, otherwise the user cannot join the study. We've just added a new question for eligibility, and then the next step is consent step. In this step, we have to get permissions to use and upload as data. In this study, let's collect heart rate, second, sleep, and blood pressure. We can configure the sync spec for each test data. So we'll add sync spec for blood pressure. And sync time is two hours. Now, we finished implementing our mobile app for the MG study. Let's build and install. It takes some time to build a mobile application. Usually, I don't really mind it gets longer. But I'm so, now I'm so nervous that I hope this will be finished as soon as possible. Go to the app. Oh, no, it takes longer. <laughs> Luckily, the app has been already installed. <laughs> As aforementioned, the onboarding task is composed of three steps. The first step is intro step. We can see the title and description of the MG study. The next one is eligibility step. This, for this step, let me assume that I'm one of the participants for this study. There are, so there are some questions for me. What's your age? I am 27 years old. <laughs> oh, so what's your gen? I am men, so I choose men. And then this question is, we just added. Do you have any Galaxy Watch? Yes, I have a Galaxy Watch 4. So yes, submit. Fortunately, I'm eligible for this study. After finishing the eligibility step, there is a constant step, finally. We can see a pop-up asking for health data permissions as I already participated in this study. So 
I click allow. And there are some statements to get participant consent. I just agree and sign this. Now, onboarding task is all done and participants are ready to join the MG study. Of course, we support login with the Google account. So let me try it. After continue, after signing up, at last we get to the landing page. Now, I'm so nervous due to this presentation. So I guess my heart rate is so high. Also, I could sleep only for three hours yesterday because of preparing this demo. <laughs> uh, I could really use a coffee. Starting now, this app starts to send vital signs to the backend periodically. Then, how can you get reports about symptoms? Let's move to the portal and see how we can do this. This time, we'll just add two questions. Let's go to the study management section and click create survey. Set title as daily task. The first question is, how intense was your headache yesterday? This question type is scale, and the response can be zero, nothing, two, ten, almost die. Second question is, which symptoms do you experience yesterday? The type of this question is single choice, and the response can be nothing, mind reading, lazy vision, and Levitation. And then by clicking the publish button, this survey is exposed to participants every day. So I choose daily and let's click the publish button again. Let's go back to the app. Click the refresh. Oh, we can see that a new survey has been added. If we click survey, we can see the questions we added on the portal. For me, I was almost dead to preparing this demo yesterday. So I have to choose 10. But I have no symptoms, so I choose nothing. Complete. When participants complete the survey, the results are sent to the back end. Let's get back to the portal again to check the survey results. We can see some visual chart of response from given questions. It shows different views according to the question type. Now, we are all ready for the MD study. Let's suppose enough data has been collected after a couple of months. It's time to analyze the relation between our data and syndrome X. Let's move on data insight sections to investigate on insight by sending some SQL queries. First query is to get people who experienced any symptoms from syndrome X. If we query, we can see some people with special symptoms. Oh, what? Well, eight people. Yeah. Second query is to compare the vital signs and symptoms between those eight people and others. For me, this 10 minutes are required to generate this query, but 
I am pretty sure you would make it in a minute. Again, this curry. You can see the results. Oh, wait up, sorry. Mm. Mm. Oh, at this point, headache intensity only shows a meaningful difference. With this result, we can guess the frequency of a severe headache is related to syndrome X. Of course, McCoy still needs more data to prove his hypothesis. So far, we've shown some pictures of our stack. <laughs> Come visit our GitHub page. We are waiting for your contributions. Hope you enjoyed our session. Thank you. Have a great time. I hope you enjoyed our session and our open source. So uh, if you have any question, please raise your hand. This is the case. Is it uh, available to, to, to any developer, pretty much, outside developer? Uh, sorry? This is the key. Is it available to any developer? Uh, yes, this is for uh, the research organizations, but uh, you know that this is open source, that actually the uh, audience will be the developers who develop application and backend system. Okay. So uh, then if it's available for everybody, what is the security, I guess, uh, uh, approach in this SDK? Yeah. Actually, it's a, it's a really good question. So. Uh, currently, it's an uh, alpha version yet, so it, we think that the security and privacy is the most important thing for this healthcare research. So uh, we have a plan to add more features, like the, uh, in U U United, uh, USA, uh, we need a HIPAA compliant uh, uh, feature to uh, support the police. But now, not now. Uh, Current our persons does not have so the, the kind of capability yet, but we are we have planned to add those kind of features later. Thank you. Kamsamnida. Thank you for a good question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. I have two questions. One okay. <laughs> is the now it's in the alpha stage, right? Um, do you have any target timeline for the stable release? So uh, we have planned to release beta version by this by the end of this year, and we are targeting the 1.0 in next year, maybe second quarter. Oh, second quarter next year, okay, thank you. And the second question is that you had a demo with, I think, Galaxy Watch 4. Right. Do you have any list of devices that, that is supported? So uh, our open source is basically using the uh, health data platform, which is the previous version of Health Connect. So, uh, it means that the, uh, uh, our open source will support the Android devices which support Health Connect API. So, but currently, this, our alpha version supports the uh, uh, wearable watch 4, Samsung Galaxy watch 4 devices yet, but maybe it can be extended watch 5 or the Fitbit, uh, 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 Android watch or Fitbit like that. But current alpha version, uh, we are using the watch for devices for the reference devices. Okay, thank you. Thank you for a great question. Questions? Uh, sorry. So you mentioned uh, it's open source. Uh, I checked the repository, I see the sample application mm -hmm. source code, mm -hmm. and it seems like there's a website source code there too, uh, the GitHub IO source right. code. Uh, do you have the actual SDK source code somewhere? Yes, the, uh, the, the SDC 2022 mega sessions will begin at 4.30 in the keynote room and concludes with our raffle drawing. Please make your way to the keynote room. Yeah, we, uh, we released our open source alpha version in the GitHub 
Uh, maybe if it is more private now, but we will change to public. So there will be a SDK and portal and backend system. All the source code will be open on the GitHub address. Thank you. Uh, hi, um, I'm sorry, I, I actually came in at the end, so you might have covered this already, but I'm wondering about um, EHR in the US, uh, electronic health records, because I work in that space uh, for the city and county of San Francisco, and like EHR, like Epic Systems Corporation, or Cerner, or Meditech, uh, there's, you know, the big hospitals in the US um, use EHR, and uh, they, in their documentation for Epic, uh, have documentation about Fitbit integration, and um, is there Samsung plans to integrate with US EHRs? Because, you know, that's, there's so much data for the big hospitals, and, um, you know, I think that would be pretty good for Samsung Health to, to tap into all that data in US EHRs. Uh, of the big hospitals in the U.S., um, uh, but I don't know if uh, there's any uh, formal projects or um, anything specific that Samsung is working in the U.S. Because the U.S. is very unique, you know, <laughs> EHR, very he expensive healthcare. Uh, in this en environment in the U.S., uh, you know, is Samsung uh, trying to get into the EHR space and all the data in the EHR space? Yeah, thank you for a good question. So personally, I am very interested to integrate the EHR data and because I believe that those data will be the very, very uh, important source data for the healthcare research, like the uh, development of the bio data biomarkers. But uh, today's our, in our presentation, the, uh, the open source does not cover that, uh, that area. Okay. Does that answer to your question? Um, kind of. Um, there are open source EHRs too. If, like, I googled that open source EHR, and um, it is a thing. Um, but in the U.S. Uh, health environment, uh, it doesn't seem like any big hospitals are going to use open source EHR um, to have that happen. Uh, you know, it, I mean, it might happen. The uh, SDC 2022 okay. mega sessions will begin at 4:30 in the keynote room and concludes with our raffle drawing. Please make your way to the keynote room. Yeah, so um, I didn't do so much research, but I can tell nothing like Stanford Healthcare, UCSF, they're on Epic EHR, and uh, I don't see big hospitals using open source EHRs, but it's, it's possible, you know, why not you know, have Linux uh, open source EHR kind of a market in the future? Um, but you know, with such billions of dollars going into Epic, Cerner, Meditech, I, I don't see that um, you know, they're, they're gonna make it easy for open source EHR for big hospitals in the US. So, uh. yeah. so maybe we can uh, contact the big hospitals to what are their requirements. Maybe uh, they may interest in this open source or not. But uh, I think that currently our open source does not, does not cover that areas yet. It, it's very complicated. Uh, right. Sorry to jump in a little bit, but it's very complicated. Epic EHR is sort of like the, the main uh, hub, but then there's also third party integrations with you know, EKGs for Philips and uh, RALs. I don't even know what that is. Um, in my workplace, I hear all sorts of these third-party applications, and mm -hmm. they are uh, they kind of integrate to Epic. But it would be it, it would seems like it would take a lot for them to all go open source, and um, it just seems. I mean, that's just the environment of of the U.S. for big hospitals. Yeah, I think the time is running uh, almost done, so I maybe we can uh, I can answer after this uh, session. Thank you, thank you.